let's find the integral of this massive monstrous thing over here. So we've got 2x divided by x squared plus 9, and then plus 2 of x, plus 1 over x squared plus 9, plus 1 over x squared, all finding the integral with respect to x. And of course, there's sort of think of this as brackets here. Anyway, so to find this um, integral, it's going to be interesting because it'll show us a lot of different integrals. Um, basically, we're going to break it up into four smaller integrals and then put the answer back together at the end. So um, let's do that. So this is equal to the integral of 2x over x squared plus 9 uh, dx plus the integral of 2 over x dx plus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 9 dx and plus the integral of 1 over x squared uh, dx. And these integrals individually are much easier than this massive thing over here. In fact, um, most of these are sort of standard integrals in one way or another. Um, certainly, certainly these last three are just standard, and this first one is going to be fairly easy to do as well. We can notice, we'll focus on this first one for a bit, that um, the what we've got on the top of this fraction here, 2x, is actually the derivative of x squared plus 9. So for example, um, we could use a u substitution here to take advantage of that. For example, u equals x squared plus 9, uh, and then we know that the u dx is going to be uh, just 2x. So we could rewrite this sort of first um, integral here as the integral of the u dx over um, u dx. And so that, of course, um, is just the same as the integral of 1 over u times du dx, bringing that outside the fraction. And we have what we need here to perform a change of variables, du dx and this dx. So we can change this integral into an integral in u. Uh, and it will just be 1 over u du. And that is one of the standard integrals. It's just the uh, natural log of u. In fact, the absolute value of u. Um, We'll worry about a, a sort of constant of integration maybe later. Um, but this is the answer. And to get it back in terms of x, we just need to um, reverse the substitution. And so we end up with um, the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 9. Now there's one more sort of step here, and that is that seeing as we have absolute values here of something like x squared plus 9, there's actually no need for these values because if we think about x squared plus 9, um, it's actually a graph that looks something like this. Um, if you have the x-axis here and the y-axis, um, y equals x squared plus 9. Um, the point I'm getting at is that it's a quadratic um, that is always above the x-axis. It will never be negative, so if you take the absolute value of something like that, it's just going to be the value itself. So this is actually just the natural log of x squared plus 9. There we go. So um, that gives us the solution to the first part of this um, integral problem. Let's look at the next one. So how about this one here? Um, actually, 2 two over x, this one is going to be fairly straightforward um, as well. Um, so we end up with, we, we can rewrite this, I guess, by taking the 2 out the front um, and just writing as 2 times 1 over x dx. And just like before, this 1 over x dx thing here, it's a lot like this 1 over u du. It's really easy. It's just 2 natural log of the absolute value of x. Um, and actually, there's one more thing we can do here, because um, using a log law, we can take this 2 on the inside of the log and write it as the natural log of um, the absolute value of x squared. And then there's one final simplification we can make as well, because we actually know um, that if we have something that is the absolute value of x, that's going to be the positive version of x. Um, if x is negative, we'll negate it. If x is already positive, we'll leave it alone. Um, and so when we square that, we know that if we square a negative number or we square the positive version of the number, we get the same result. So what this is actually going to turn into is just x squared. And all that's saying, all I'm saying there is that um, if you square the negative version of x or the positive version of x, it doesn't matter. You're still going to get x squared as the result. So we can make that simplification as well. Okay, we're kind of running out of space here, so let me make some more space. Um, so let's look at maybe this. This next one, um, one, I'll sort of dotted arrow down to here, and look at 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. Yeah. How could we integrate this? Well, this is almost a standard integral. Um, so 
one that looks kind of similar to this is the integral of a over x squared plus a squared dx, which is um, arctan, or inverse tan, of x over a. And that's just a standard one from you know, your formula sheet um, that you should remember if you are learning integration. Um, and so to apply this, we realize that you know we've almost got this. We've got a 9 down here. Um, let me make this a little clearer. This here is an a. Uh, this is a, the number 9. Um, we have a number 9 down here. Well, that's just 3 squared. 9 is 3 squared, so that's kind of like a is 3. But we only have a 1 up here. We don't have a 3, so it's not quite this form. We can make it into this form by um, a simple sort of change. We can just multiply by a third and then also multiply by 3. And if we do that on the inside and the third outside, it looks something like this. Uh, x squared plus 9, which is 3 squared. And now we have this format. So by sort of bringing out this one third out the front, we end up with this format. Um, and then we can apply our standard integral and write this as one third multiplied by this whole thing. It just looks like this, so it just becomes inverse tan of x over 3, because 3 is a in this case. Okay, now finally, um, making a bit of a mess, but finally we can maybe go over here somewhere and do this last one, the integral of 1 over x squared. Now this is just a standard integral. We could actually write this, if we liked, as the integral of x to the minus 2 um, dx. So seeing as it's just a power function, um, there's just a rule that says that if you want to integrate something like this, you just um, increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So that's fairly straightforward to do. Um, we will increase the power by 1 from negative 2 to minus 1, and then divide by the new power. So divide by minus 1. And so we end up with equals minus um, x to the minus 1. x to the minus 1 is just 1 over x. Maybe that's the nicest way to write it. So, um, that's pretty much, that's all of the different parts. So let's go back to our original um, sort of equation that we had and write out the answer. Um, so, the answer is um, the first integral, which was this one here, ended up being the natural log of x squared plus 9. Uh, and then the second answer ended up being the natural log of x, so plus, plus the second integral. Sorry, natural log of yeah x squared. Um, okay, and then we have this arctan one, so that ends up being plus a third inverse tan of x over 3. And then um, finally plus this, so we could write minus 1 over x plus negative 1 over x. Um, there we go. So uh, this is where we can bring in like our plus one constant of integration. You can kind of think of this as each integral here would have had a constant of integration, and we can sort of all lump them all together into just some other constant and call it c at the end here. But I haven't written them throughout the rest of the lesson. Anyway, so that's not quite the final step because we can do it a little bit more. We can take this and simplify it into something that looks a little nicer. And we'll do that now. So here we go. Um, well, the only real thing we can do here is maybe um, collect collect these two together with a log law that says that if you add two logs together, it's the same as timesing what's on the inside. So um, we would get the natural log of um, x squared multiplied by x squared plus 9. That is the argument here, x squared multiplied by the argument here, x squared plus 9. Um, and just to sort of fully write out the rest of this, we could write uh, plus one third inverse tan of x over 3 and minus 1 over x and plus c and then we are done.